Hi, my name is Eric Luther, and today we're going to cover the NIUSRP RIA LabVIEW and LabVIEW FPGA driver API. This high performance software defined radio prototyping platform is capable of 2x2 MIMO with two transmit and two receive channels, a large customizable Kintec 7 FPGA, and optimized RF performance. The USRP RIO can be combined for high performance, high channel count MIMO systems with very low latency. It connects to your host PC using a PCI Express by 4 cable and has two software host API experiences. The first is fully backward compatible with the current NIUSRP product line allowing you to run existing code with the USRP RIO. To illustrate this, I've opened one of my favorite USRP examples. This is a simple spectrum analyzer. We'll start out by examining the block diagram and then move to Designs created with the host-based NIUSRP use the same driver API. You configure a device and then acquire the signal, plotting both time domain and frequency domain within the same LabVIEW VI. So now we'll go and we'll run the VI. The first step is to change the device name to RIO0, which is the VISA name that indicates the name of the USRP device on the PCI Express bus. We'll also set it to a carrier frequency supported by my NIUSRP2942 device. At this frequency, I would expect to see beacon signals from an 802.11b Wi-Fi hotspot. And as you can see, the spectrum looks pretty busy. Let's see if we can go decode it. Let me close this VI and open up my 82.11b decoder. The first step is to change my VISA resource name or my device name to point to my USRP RIO. Now I'll start my own ad hoc network called Demo USRP that will be transmitted by my laptop. So now we should be able to receive the beacon signals and decode the SSID. Oh, and it looks like it's working great. Let's move on. I want to stress that the NIUSRP host-based driver API allows you to run the same examples on USRP or USRP RIO in most cases without changes. This is great because it allows you to run your existing code on the new platform immediately. The NIUSRP RIO driver API is modeled after the host API. However, it provides both a host interface as well as customizable FPGA code. The best way to understand the API is to walk through the signal path, starting with the analog to digital converters, moving through impairment correction and the digital down converter, as well as examining where you might insert your own code, and how data is transferred back to the host with the DMA FIFOs. We'll then look at where you insert your own host code and follow the signal through the transmit path. Because we now have two targets, all of our code will be managed within a project within LabVIEW. This is where the host code will be stored, and also we have our FPGA device. The project is made up of a hierarchy of a large number of files. Those files consist of project documentation, also the API that we use in order to configure the device, as well as uh, utilities that we might use to interact with the device. Within the project tree, I have my FPGA and my host VI. We're going to go ahead and expand the FPGA so that we can examine the different resources that are available. They include the radio interface, so uh, the uh, registers that allow me to read and write from my ADCs, as well as to look and see if LOs are locked. Also access to the auxiliary I.O. And again, all of these are ports that I can drop onto my diagram. I also have clocks such as the data clock and onboard clocks that I can use to establish clock domains of the different data and also DMA FIFOs that I would use to transfer data from my USRP RIO back to the host. All of these resources I can then use within my streaming example that's running on the FPGA. This front panel is used for establishing registers for single data points that can be pulled from the host. These are not used for transferring large amounts of data. For that, we'd use the DMA FIFO. So let's take a look at the block diagram. One of the first things you'll notice is that I've established a clock domain. That clock domain is set at 120 MHz, which is the rate of my ADCs. Here I'm reading my ADCs. The color blue indicates an integer, 
and the thin wire indicates that I'm reading a single sample from all four ADCs. That's I and Q from channel 1 and channel 2, and I'm passing that to my impairment correction and digital down conversion VI. If I open up this VI, what you'll notice is that I have two channels, and I'm doing an independent digital down conversion on each one of those channels. Within that down conversion, the first thing I'm doing is implying impairment correction. I'm reading values stored on the EEPROM. This is a unique feature of the NIUSRP RIO. Secondly, I'm implementing a CORDIC as well as digital down conversion. This allows me to create lower bandwidth, more manageable data when I transfer it back to the host. Now let's go back to the main LabVIEW FPGA VI. You see a blue wire that passes data to a DMA FIFO. This DMA FIFO transfers data to memory on the host for processing. If I now go and look at the transmit process, I read from a DMA FIFO on the host, I pass it through a wire, I go through the inverse step of the digital up conversion and the impairment correction or pre-distortion before I transmit using the DAX. And again, you'll see that all four DAX are synchronized. That's I and Q for each channel. This VI is clearly a little bit larger than my screen, so let's scroll over and take a look at some of the housekeeping work that's also being done. This allows me to manage some of the state machine processes that are going on within my FPGA. I might want to check the status of whether LOs are locked, and I also want my circular buffers to not overwrite data and throw warnings. So these elements of the application are required. Now when I jump back over to my single cycle time loop that's my streaming engine, you'll see that I have a blue wire here. This is the wire that I would break into or work with if I wanted to add my own custom processing between the ADCs and the DMA FIFO on the host. Let me take a moment to describe what's happening on the host. We've implemented an OFDM transmitter and receiver that's LTE-like in nature. We're transmitting data, receiving and decoding it, and calculating at a bit error rate. In this case, we're using multiple models of computation, both LabVIEW's graphical code as well as the M-file script syntax you see below. We're able to integrate this directly into our LabVIEW VI. Let's start by looking at the block diagram of our host-based processing VI. We start by generating random bits. We then map those bits to QAM constellations. We parallelize them, and then we interleave reference symbols. If we take a look at these examples, we can see that interleaving within LabVIEW is fairly straightforward to understand with graphical programming. We then do zero padding, where we put a zero in the null in the center as well as on the edges of our OFDM symbol that we've generated. We then do our inverse FFT to create a time domain signal, insert the cyclic prefix, scale to an integer number from double precision, and then coerce it to an integer and pass it to our DMA FIFO. At this point, you've seen the entire transmit signal path, starting with bits, transferring process data through the DMA FIFO, passing through impairment correction, all the way to the digital to analog converters. At that point, the data is transmitted to the RF front end and transmitted over the air. Now let's move up in our example and examine the receiver. In this case, once the data is passed back to the host from the DMA FIFO, we've implemented a simple energy-based trigger on the host. Next, we use the Van de Beek algorithm to both detect our frame positioning as well as any frequency offsets that might exist. Once we pull out our frame, our cyclic prefix, and then we apply our frequency offset correction, we compute the FFT. This gives us our frequency bends that we can then extract both references and data symbols. Once we have references and data symbols, we can calculate equalization, apply that equalization to our data symbols, and recover our constellation, and then convert that back to bits. In this case, we have plotted the transmitter across the top and the receiver across the bottom. We added an extra feature where while we're running the application, we can change the order of the QAM modulation on the fly. In fact, every second, we change the modulation scheme used to a higher order QAM. Let's go ahead and run the VI and observe it in action. 
What you'll notice is that I'm transmitting a very clean signal. You see the signal that I receive, both in the frequency domain as well as the rotating constellation before equalization has been applied. We move from 4, 8, 16, 32, and 64 qualm, changing the modulation scheme every second, and you also see the calculated bit error rate. Wow, in the last 10 minutes we've covered a lot. We discussed how you can use the NIUSRP driver API with your existing host-based implementations, or you can use the new NIUSRP Rio VI and have full access to both the FPGA and host-based processing for more advanced lower latency applications. The next logical step would be for me to take my OFDM design and move it into the FPGA. We'll save that for the next video, where we'll discuss moving from floating point to fixed point, as well as managing time domains and the different types of resources that you have available with an FPGA that you have access to within the LabVIEW FPGA driver. Thank you very much for joining us, and you can learn more about USRP Rio at ni.com slash USRP.